Hello doll fans, I've split this video into two parts because it was frustrating me that these two quite distinct different topics, Kira, one of Barbie's friends, and also Barbie's attempts to appeal to an East Asian audience were lumped together into one video. So I've split the video in half. This part is just about Barbie's attempts to appeal to an East Asian audience. And the second half is about Barbie's friend, Kira. I thought that lumping them together did the two topics a disservice. This way, the two topics can be standalone videos. I hope you understand. Hello doll fans and welcome back to Beauty Inside a Box. My name's Joey and today we are talking about East Asian representation in the Barbie line. Mattel has a very interesting history trying to sell Barbie dolls in Asia as well as to an Asian American audience. If you love dolls and Barbie as much as I do, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel, check me out on Instagram, check me out on TikTok, and also don't forget to check out my Patreon. My Patreon is a new thing I've started. At the moment, there are two exclusive videos on my Patreon. One is an updated room tour. The other one is where I go through all of my 80s and 90s Barbies. And I'm in the process of filming another video for my Patreon, which is going to be my noughties Barbie collection all my Barbie dolls from the 2000s. So if you are interested in any of that, please go and check out my Patreon. Your support means everything and the tiers start from only $3. But before we can talk any more deeply about Kira, we have to talk about Mattel's many attempts at East Asian representation that led up to Kira's existence. An important distinction to make is between Mattel's attempt at appealing to an Asian audience and their attempts at appealing to an Asian American audience. They can be quite different. Barbie in Japan. Barbie was originally manufactured in 1959 in Japan. And now she's manufactured in China, Indonesia, Malaysia, Mexico, and Thailand. Although she originated in Japan, historically, Barbie has never found much success in Japan. She's a bit of a flop in Japan. An article from the New York Times says, in the 1960s, as Japan was still rebuilding from the devastation of World War II, Japanese rarely saw foreigners and considered blonde hair strange. The article also says, kids don't aspire to be older in this market because when you get to be a teenager, you study all the time. At first, Mattel refused to change Barbie's appearance to appeal to a Japanese audience. But in 1965, after Barbie was becoming increasingly more unpopular in Japan, Mattel decided to give Midge a makeover with dark hair and dark eyes. But Japanese audiences still hated the doll. In 1967, Takara, a toy company in Japan, introduced Lika-chan, a doll which appealed a lot more to Japanese audiences. Lika-chan has since become a massive success in Japan, comparable to Barbie's success in America. In 1982, Mattel decided to collaborate with Takara on a Japanese version of Barbie known as Takara Barbie. The doll was designed to appeal to Japanese audiences with big anime eyes, soft features, and a closed mouth. The doll was a success, although not as successful as Lika-chan. Lika-chan was slaying the game. She was top of the charts. She had her foot on Barbie's throat. <laughs> But the partnership between Mattel and Takara would end and the doll's name would be changed to Jenny. In 1999, Mattel would release a Japanese exclusive Barbie doll called Barbie Forever Friends. She was dressed in a school uniform with noticeably bigger eyes. She also had an exclusive Japanese friend called Rina. 
Since then, Barbie has slowly become more popular in Japan as Japanese tastes become more cosmopolitan, although she has never reached the same success as Licker Chan. Licker Chan! The undefeated queen of the Japanese doll market. Now let's talk about Barbie in China. Barbie is popular in China, but she isn't a cultural icon like she is in the USA. She's just a doll. You know, she, she's just a doll. Mattel began manufacturing Barbies in China in 1997, although these were mostly to be shipped to America. They weren't for a Chinese audience. In 2009, a lot of companies were trying to break into the Chinese market as China's economy grew and America was going through a recession. So they were abandoning ship, effectively. Mattel decided to spend $30 million on a 36,000 square foot, six-story Barbie flagship store in Shanghai. Mattel, please build one of these in London. I would go every day. I would single-handedly keep that store afloat. Unfortunately, the store in Shanghai was a massive failure because the Chinese have a different relationship to femininity and prefer a cuter aesthetic. Mattel released a special Shanghai-exclusive friend for Barbie called Ling. Interestingly enough, the original blonde Barbie was a lot more popular in China than Ling, but this was still not enough to save the flagship store, and it was only open for two years. Pretty embarrassing. Ling looks so cute. I would love to have this doll. A Forbes article says, Mattel didn't quite understand what Chinese girls and young women want. The Chinese concept of femininity is very different from that of America. In China, feminine is more about sweet and soft rather than smart and strong. More about gentle and loving rather than dazzling and fashion forward. Although it has created a Chinese Barbie, Ling, with black hair who wears Chinese attire, Mattel failed to understand what Ling would represent in order to appeal to Chinese girls. Also, middle-class Chinese parents were a lot more interested in buying educational, enriching toys for their kids. A quote from a blog post called Barbie, the secret to success in China says, In China, parents are more likely to send their children to various kinds of classes rather than buy them toys. Most Chinese parents have the traditional thought that playing with toys is a waste of time and does no good for kids. Mattel eventually attempted to promote Barbie in China again and created a couple of Barbies specifically designed for a Chinese market. Dolls which encouraged education and learning instruments such as the violin. It's simple things like tweaking the themes. Instead of Barbie you with a guitar which will, which will work in many markets, now it is Barbie with a violin. Uh, what we're also doing is we're delivering complete play in a box. So for, for girls who get one Barbie doll a year, this is a great value uh, for money box where there's a complete play. You can take it home and you can pretty much start playing in the Barbie environment. You don't need to go and buy the house and the other accessories. Uh, here we have a lot more focus on the learning aspect of a toy or the learning aspect of play. So joy of learning would work in one place. Uh, here it becomes play IQ. Since 2009, Barbie's popularity has grown in China, especially since the success of the Barbie movie in 2023. But she still isn't as popular as she is in the USA. So now we've spoken about Barbie's success in Asia, or rather, lack of success in Asia. Now let's talk about Mattel's attempts to appeal to an Asian American audience. In 1980, Mattel introduced a line of Barbie dolls called Barbie International. The line would later become known as Barbie Dolls of the World. The first wave featured an Italian doll, a Parisian doll, and a royal doll, which was meant to be from England. The second wave of dolls was released in 1981 and featured a Scottish doll and an Oriental doll. Oriental Barbie was the first Barbie to use what would later be known as the Kira face mold. And this adorable face mold is still used today in the Barbie line. Even though the doll is mentioned on the box to be from Hong Kong, the 
outdated term oriental suggests a more general Asian theme. The back of the box says, I am from Hong Kong, an island off mainland China. It is in the Orient or Far East, which includes countries such as Japan, Taiwan, Thailand, and Malaysia. Mattel attempts to educate Americans about China on the back of the box, but it mostly just reinforces stereotypes and makes Chinese culture feel very othered and alien. It says, Throughout the Orient, people shop at outdoor marketplaces where goods such as fish, vegetables, silks, and spices are openly displayed. In this part of the world, we eat rice with our meals rather than bread or potatoes. We use chopsticks for eating instead of knives and forks. Barbie's first attempt at an Asian doll was definitely quite vague about where in Asia they're from, and also relied on quite a lot of stereotypes, but it was a product of its time. For a little bit of historical context, in 1982, Vincent Chin was K-worded in a racially motivated attack in Michigan. Vincent was an American man of Chinese descent, but the attackers had mistakenly thought he was Japanese. The attack had happened against a backdrop of high anti-Japanese sentiment in the United States. The culprits didn't serve any jail time. At the time, and still today, Asian people are made to feel as if they are all the same. The case involving Vincent Chin has since been viewed as the start of the pan-Asian civil rights movement. Mattel clearly took note of this because all future Asian dolls from the Dolls of the World line would clearly represent specific Asian countries instead of just being marked as Oriental. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you're new here, check me out on Instagram and TikTok, and also don't forget to check out my Patreon. Your support means everything to me, doll fans. I will see you real soon. Bye! <laughs> Thank you to Siren Kelly and all of my amazing patrons. Your support means everything.